Good evening, everyone. It is 8 p.m. Central Time, and my name is Trevor Patrick Watkin, and I am broadcasting live from Access Contemporary School of Music in Chicago, Illinois. It has been an absolutely gorgeous day outside. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. Excuse me. Yes, better lighting is always a good choice. Well, as good of lighting as I can have. So I have my, I have everything configured much better now. So I have the chat like right here in front of my face. So I'm really digging this. Um, I repeat, like the first two shows I did, I, we, yeah, first two shows I did, I didn't have the chat on. I don't know why, because this is kind of my favorite part. So, and I'm much more comfortable now, so I can actually like do everything at once. So this is wonderful. As I mentioned, I am broadcasting from Access Contemporary School of Music, which is where I teach and work and pretty much actually these days do everything. So I wanted to share this part of my life with you. We are, a, we teach private lessons primarily, but we do have classes in music theory for all ages. There's different classes depending on the age group. And I also teach a film scoring class, which is actually about to start up again pretty soon. But uh, we are still accepting new students. We are still doing all of our lessons online. I had a lot of that today. Tomorrow is one of my big teaching days. Uh, and I found that it's kind of interesting to go from immediately from teaching to this. It's a little bit of a of a, of a mind switch, but it's really fantastic to be part of a school that is still managing to function in some degree of normality in the midst of all of this today. Speaking of which, uh, we are planning to, obviously we're planning to open up again. We don't know when that will be, but right now we're sort of getting our act together with regard to what we need to have for our students and to operate safely. And of course, one of those things involves having masks. So if you know anyone who is making masks as a side hustle, I would really like to know that. I would really appreciate it if in the comments you would just pop some information for me because I would really like to support small business. In fact, one of the things that I'm seeing around the neighborhood, I, I live in this area, of course, uh, but one of the things I'm seeing in the neighborhood is these businesses that are otherwise closed, like for example, hair salons and things like that, are actually selling masks. And I think that's really fantastic. And I really want to have a whole stockpile because I really don't know what's ahead of us. Uh, as I mentioned in my first video, I have an absolute pirate's hoard of sanitation products. Boy, am I glad that I had a lot of those anyway, moving into this, because there's absolutely no way I would have been able to uh, once all of this started. So. And actually, what's it like in your neck of the woods? I mean, obviously here in our neighborhood, I mean, the mood is generally positive and people are out walking their dogs, behaving normally. Of course, we're all wearing masks and everything like that. But I appreciate the fact that it isn't all doom and gloom and everything, everyone is pulling together uh, really well. And I, I'm just, I wanna know, what's, what's it like where you are? Um, anyway, what I'd like to do is I would like to talk a little bit about foray, which is what I'm doing today. Uh, for those of you who aren't conversant in, you know, composers or, or what have you, foray is an example of what we refer to as a late romantic composer, uh, flourished late 19th century, early 20th century, taught at the Paris Conservatory. And is an example to me of just 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 good just good music that you can just put on and enjoy not background music per se but just very very tuneful lush lovely writing and that's what i get to play for you today i think um for me anyway with these shows there is a tendency when i've been picking the pieces that i've wanted to play there has a been there has been a, a tendency for me to want to pack the program with all of my special stunts, but that can get a bit exhausting. <laughs> and not that this music uh, tonight isn't challenging in some way, but w there needs to be some kind of a, of a flow. There needs to be a balance. You know, I've, I've heard it referred to, um, I've heard conductors talk about planning a program the way one would plan a meal and you wouldn't put, you know, a steak course and then, you know, chicken and fish. I mean, you wouldn't pack it full of entrees. You would have a whole variety of different music. And so that's what I'm performing for you tonight. So tonight I actually have two pieces. Uh, the first is Fantasy, which 
Um, so, okay, so fantasy is, is sort of one of those pieces that you learn when you're in high school. And in fact, the reason why I learned it, in fact, this was kind of the driving engine behind pretty much everything I learned in, in high school, was it was on the audition list for the various uh, honor bands and orchestras. In California, the honor bands and orchestra systems are very competitive because California, of course, is the most populous state in the country. And the especially all state, you can just imagine. And so my senior year fantasy was on the audition list. Now, even today, so that was, I auditioned for Allstate in, that would have been, I think, December of 98. That sounds about right. It would have been, yeah, it would have been the winter of 98 or late fall. And I can still remember my audition cuts. Like, I still know where they are. It, time has done nothing to remove those. It's been almost 22 years since I have auditioned for Allstate and got in, by the way. Uh, but... When my students are doing audition cuts and various things like that, one of the things that I absolutely, well, demand seems like a harsh word, but the things that I the thing that I absolutely request them to do and make sure they do is learn the entire piece, because forever, well, hopefully not forever, but even now that this piece is partitioned off in my mind, and and so I it's very difficult for me to perform the piece whole and entire. I mean, I'm sure as heck going to give it my, my, my best tonight, but I can still remember where all of those cuts were. And so it's very important to have the entire piece learned because I think the first time I performed this was probably, shoot, like two years after I learned it. I don't think I performed it until college, the whole thing. So, and then the, the next piece on the program tonight, it's a very, very short piece called Morceau de Concours. I have to apologize to all of my French speaking audience. I have to tell you because I, I do, I know I do have one because ACM is just down the street from the uh, Lycée de Francais and I completely messed up the spelling. When I gave Bill the title of this piece, I had the wrong word. It's actually D-E, not D-U, very different meanings. And I didn't realize it until last night when I was putting everything together and I just went, oh man. But I'm leaving it up because I'm owning my shame and I'm not going to try and retcon the situation. So yes, I have spelled it wrong. I am aware of it and I apologize. But anyway, more so de concours is so the legend goes. Uh, it was Bastille Day, July, July 14th. And Gabriel Fauré, who taught at the Paris Conservatory, had his day off from the conservatory and wrote this little gem. This was actually written, I was surprised to learn, this was actually written as a sight reading piece, which is not all that else, that's not completely outside of believability. Not that it's like insanely easy, but it makes sense, like it, all the arpeggios and various things like that. And so I really love the idea of this professor on his day off, just sitting down and writing a piece of music and that makes me really happy and it, and it really is i mean when i when i hear the word morceau i think of morsel and it really is it's a morsel so anyway that has been my spiel i'm very excited that you're here with me tonight it's just, just a, always a thrill to perform for you and uh, i'm going to do it now so without further ado this is fantasy and morceau de concours d-e not d-u i won't make that mistake again silly me
Isn't that nice? It's just a nice, just well-written, nice piece of music. And, um, and actually, I think it's much more difficult to write a short piece of music than it is to play a long one, because when you play, when you write a long piece of music, you have, you have time to get out everything that you want to say. And so every, if you ever really can find space of time, for example, m one of my favorite writers, actually probably my favorite writer ever, is Joan Didion. And she even talks about this, how writing an article, you don't have the luxury of just tons and tons of space. In fact, I think the first thing she wrote for Vogue was actually set to a character limit. She had actually had to have the right amount of characters. So I think that's really fascinating. Anyway, um, I could go on. So tomorrow night's show, tomorrow night's show is Bach. It's the first time I've done Bach. And just like uh, last Saturday when I did the Handel Concerto, uh, excuse me, the Sonata, I'm gonna do it in historical tuning. And the, you might be wondering, some of you musicologists out there might be wondering why I'm not doing the entire suite. I wasn't able to find the entire suite. I would much rather play the whole piece. That would, that would be my ideal. But I, I'm only playing three movements. I'm playing the Polonaise, the Minuet, and the Bedanerie. The Bedanerie actually was my very first ringtone on my cell phone, so that's fun. So I really hope you'll join me for that. Also, down in the description box, not only will you find information on the musicians who provided the backing tracks for me tonight, but I'm also doing a full-length recital on Sunday because I'm not playing enough. So I am doing a recital. <laughs> doing... No, I'm, I'm very, very excited to do it. Um, especially since as, as I've... So this is... Tomorrow will be two weeks since I started doing these. And every single time I haven't necessarily gotten better, but I've, I've learned more about how to do live streaming. And now I'm going to go back and play some of the things that I played over the course of the last two weeks. I'll be doing that on Sunday. It is on Facebook Live. And although it is open to the public, I put a link down there for you. Uh, and yes, I will be doing my, my usual live stream on YouTube at 8. So I, I, you know, pick a, I mean, come to both, come to, you know, come to one of them, though. That'd be nice. Um, I'm also going to be putting rough timestamps of when I'm going to get to certain pieces, just in case people want to just tune in for one particular piece or whatever. But anyway, as always, it's been a pleasure to play for you. This is just, I'm just thrilled that I can even do this. I mean, this would have been unimaginable for me even 10 years ago, even five years ago. In fact, even three weeks ago, no joke. This was started as a lark, and now here we are, and... I'm really looking forward to watching this back and making sure that all the audio is synced because I'm so tired of watching it back and having it be different than I thought it was. But thank you so much for being here. Please stay happy, please stay healthy, and I very much hope to see you tomorrow for Bach. <laughs>